Hello, Fermented folks. We are here live today with a very exciting episode of Fermented Fiction. Today, our feature author of the month is going to be Al Makatsu, author of Red London, Red Widow, um, and a bunch of historical horror fiction, and also some, I don't know, I'd almost call your, would you almost call your time, your kind of time uh, vampire trilogy, would you almost call that a fantasy, or would you keep that a, a horror as well, do you think? Well, you know, I like to think it's horror, but um, I think it falls more in like that, you know, sort of dark fantasy romance thing. And I have to say, there's no vampires in it. I know it looks like there should be vampires in it, but uh... it has its own myth. And and people actually wrote to me complaining that there were no vampires in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, because that uh, I've read it all your stuff from The Hunger On, basically. Um, that's I haven't gone back further than that to those books, but just by looking at them, I was like, oh, that must it looks like vampires. But it's more yes, like it, uh it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there it is. Um, well, I apologize for that there. Um, but we're very happy to have you on the show, Alma. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm Clay Vermolum. That's my brother Travis Vermolum in the other screen there. Um, and we'll be hosting this fermented fiction today, and we're gonna get right into it. Alma. What's going on? Oh, goodness. Well, I'm just wrapping up all the promotion for Red London, which came out a couple weeks ago, I guess. Time flies. <laughs> and um, so that's been great. We've been getting really, really good word of mouth on the book and all kinds mm -hmm. of fun stuff. And I guess I can now say it. We did close on a film deal for it for TV. So oh, wow. Yeah, Congratulations. Started working on that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Is. Are you are you able to disclose which studio? I'm a I'm a huge TV and film geek, so I should be able to, right? It's uh, I, uh Temple Hill and Lionsgate are the partners on this. Awesome. Lionsgate, wow, good for you. That's awesome. I know it was crazy. We uh, we ended up talking to a lot of studios, studios I never thought I'd be talking to over the holidays. <laughs> but if you follow film, then you know that the market kind of dropped out of the TV market for a while because uh streamers figured out they're producing too much content so they weren't buying new shows but we still managed yay to get a deal so um now hopefully we can get started before the writer's strike which is going to be in may <laughs> <laughs> good luck yeah um that's good i'm actually glad to hear that red london and and red widow are going to be so they're going to be films rather than shows no, is that the, tv show it, yeah, it is going to be a show okay okay yeah. there was a lot of debate some studios a couple of them thought it would be better as a movie but i think most of them were interested in a tv show and i'm all for that i'm you know, oh yeah so much you can do i think the show is great for book translations because it uh it moved it, it, it they then don't have to really leave anything out um if they want to be loyal to the subject matter they really can on a whole nother level um, yeah, that's a whole it'll be interesting. question. Though. Yeah, yeah. I know. I was just going to say, it'll be interesting to see, because I was listening to you on, I think, the Thriller Zone, and uh, you were talking about how if people end up in the streets with guns, uh, then something has gone terribly wrong in the real spy world. Like, that's not realistic right. at all. And I, I, I hope that they stick to your book, uh, how it has, um, it sounds like played it, uh, much more to the realistic sensibilities of what that job is like. <laughs> well, I was going to say that was sort of the idea behind the book, right? I really wanted to show what it was like um, in real life uh, to mm -hmm. look more at the sort of moral and ethical challenges that you get faced with when you're in this line of work and uh, to really show what it was like for women these days in intelligence. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you see a lot of books that are historical, like World War II, women spies, when they were sort of the um, exception rather than the rule. And while mm -hmm. all that's great, you know, we're 50% roughly of the workforce today. So, you know, I wanted to show that things had changed quite a bit. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, generally spy tv shows and movies and that sort of thing you know they're either like military-ish thrillers like mm -hmm. they go into the special ops side of things which mm -hmm. really just kind of came up after the iraq war right as a consequence of the war on terrorism but what's more to excuse me more traditional um is 
you know, traditional clandestine work, which is not running around with guns, not, you know, having firefights in the street. You're trying to sort of one up the adversary. And if you're good, they won't even know you're there. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, and with that's uh, you see that more in the great power struggle. So now that we're kind of shifting back to that Russian, Russia, China, I think we're going to see less emphasis in the real world, less emphasis on special ops, more emphasis on traditional clandestine work. We'll see if the books follow, the TV shows follow. That, the, a few things you mentioned kind of lead me to a question that I've, I've been dying to ask you after finishing The Hunger, and I'm, I'm halfway through the deep. Um, and I really like that you say the focus in, in Red Window, Red London are on those ethical, moral questions of like at the heart of what a person is and who they want to be, because that was something I really enjoyed in The Hunger of even the characters that from a different character's perspective, I hated. When you got to their point of view, I was like, man, it's really hard to dislike anybody because I see their personal struggles. How do you go about kind of writing those intense, like, personalities and what they fight through every day well i definitely prefer character driven fiction so i like really well-rounded characters and i think at this point i'm kind of getting known for writing well-rounded characters and so you know i've thought a lot about how did that happen and i have to say it, it probably is something that i've sort of picked up from the intelligence work like especially mm. when you work at cia which is the lead for human intelligence you really have to learn how to like read other people and understand motivations. And I'm not just talking about assets. I mean, the people you work with, <laughs> you yes. have to figure out what is going on in their head and what is driving <laughs> them and, you know, how to get them to do what you need them to do and not oppose you. So there's just a lot of good old human psychology there, you know, and, and then I just have to think of the circumstances, you know, this is a person, he's got these motivations, what are the circumstances that would make him come out, you know, if you put somebody under a little bit of stress, usually their true personality, uh, you know, is going to take the lead. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. It makes me feel a little bad sometimes, but um, 